Hey kids and welcome back to Second Kids Worship. I hope you've had a great week. Many of you may have started school this past week or you're starting school this coming week and, and I'm praying you have the best year ever. I know it's going to be different uh, with all the staggering. Some of you are going to school, some of you are doing it at home and uh, it's going to be different but I'm praying that you have a great, great year of learning and uh, it's one of the best years yet. All right. Hey, today I have a couple of questions for you. How much attention have you devoted to God this week? Um, what in life takes your attention away from God? The busyness, the things we do, lots of things may be taking our place and taking our attention away from God. Well, today we're going to learn about who God is. Yahweh, the one true God, the only God. And we're going to learn about it through the life of Moses. And if you'll remember, last week we also talked about Moses and we watched a video of his life and, and how from birth all the way till um, later on in life and how God had directed his past and helped him with all the fear that he and the people of Israel had. And today we're going to learn a little bit more about that. And we're going to learn that I can listen to and I can praise and worship the one true God, Yahweh. Today we're going to go uh, learn a story from Exodus chapter 3. And again, it's the life of Moses. And, and, and so try to remember, I'm not going to talk about it, but, but while you're sitting there at home, what do you know about Moses? What do you remember from last week? Did you know Moses was once a prince in Egypt? Well, in today's Bible story, um, he's no longer a prince. Today we're going to learn about him. And, and he's living in a place called Midian. And he's working as a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro. Now, here's the story. Moses had, had a flock of sheep, and they were out uh, on Mount Horeb, um, a place there in Midian. And, and while there, God spoke to him in an unusual way. Do you know how he spoke to him? Well, Moses is out there, and all of a sudden, he sees a bush on fire, burning, but not burning up. In other words, it was just still looked like a bush on fire, but it wasn't burning down like a tree or a bush normally would. When Moses decided, I need to go check this out because this is kind of weird. And so he walks over and gets closer to it. And then he stops. And God calls out to him and says, Moses! That would be wild. Moses coming from God? Could you imagine him saying your name? He said, Moses, and, God, and Moses said, here I am, Lord. And I could imagine he was probably trembling and scared. And, and then God instructed Moses not to come any closer. He said to remove his sandals, take his shoes off, because now when you get this close to God, it's holy ground and, and you couldn't have shoes on. He said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And this scared Moses. Again, I can't imagine. He hid his face and was afraid to look because he knew of God and he, had, he was in awe of God and respected God, but he, he just didn't know. He, he was scared to look at him at this bush where God was apparently speaking through. God said, I have seen how difficult things are for the Israelites living in Egypt. I've heard their cries for help trying to get them out of slavery. I want to rescue them from all the suffering and give them a land where they can live. And he said, Moses, I'm sending you back to Pharaoh, back to Egypt to go to Pharaoh and you will lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses, still scared, said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should lead the Israelites out of Egypt? God told Moses, he's, Moses, I'll be with you the whole way to help you. In fact, God told Moses the people would worship God on the very mountain on which Moses was now standing. He was making these promises to him. So Moses is still looking for excuses. He says, God, if I go, who do I say sent me? And God replied, tell them, listen to this. I am sent you. Say this to him. Says, say, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, 
the only God, the true God that's been worshipped from the beginning of time, the only God has sent me to you. God told Moses the king of Egypt would not let the people go, but God would take care of the situation. Moses, he was still not wanting to go. He said, God, you know, I, I don't speak very well. I'm not a good speaker. Um, could you help me out? I don't know that I can go because I'd be nervous and couldn't speak. God said, <laughs> I like this way this says it. Says, God said, who made your mouth? Am I not God? Now go and I will help you speak and I'll let you say the words that I want you to say and I'll teach you all that you need to know to be a good speaker. Still Moses didn't want to go. He said, God, please send someone else. Please send someone else. He was scared. God became a little angry with Moses. God said, I'll let Aaron, your brother, go and, and he can do the speaking for you. Was Moses excited about what God wanted him to do? No. He was scared. He was afraid of failure. He was afraid what Pharaoh might do to him. He had all these fears in him and, and, and just didn't want to go. Well, why did he have a hard time trusting God? He knew of God. He knew through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew all the stories of God and he had learned of God. But maybe he hadn't really ever trusted God enough to know that God is trustworthy. It's always, it's always easy to say we should trust God, but is it always easy? No. Sometimes our fears overcome us. Sometimes uh, the other things in our life get in the way of us being able to trust God. What can we learn from the story of Moses? This story from, of Moses. Well, I think one of the things we can learn is that um, God wants us to be in a relationship with Him. God has a plan for our lives. And even though it may be scary, even though we may think we're going to fail, we can listen to and we can trust and we can worship and praise the only God, the one true God, Yahweh. Just like Moses learned through this story that God had a plan for him and that he needed to trust God. Ask this, what, what are some ways that people praise God? Well, when we come into children's church, sometimes we, we sing and we dance and we uh, might do a skit or we play games. I think anything that we can do and give God glory for it and say, thank you, God, for all this stuff. Thank you for letting us sing. Thank you for teaching us a lesson. Thank you for um, taking care of us. When we pray, we, we worship and praise God. All those ways are, the, are ways that we praise God. So today, let's watch a video. And what we're going to do is we're going to see Casey and Casey learn about listening to and praising God. I don't know what that was all about, but it was great. <laughs> Thanks. Casey and I are trying out for a school spirit talent show. If we win, they'll videotape us and show us at the big pep rally. Oh, cool. Well, food's getting cold. Wash your hands and come and eat. 
Those beat and rhythm noises we were making is called beatboxing. Yeah, last year at the talent show, these three guys did beatboxing, but they beatboxed rhythm and instruments. And they sounded like a real band. It was so cool. Wow. Oh, hey, are you guys ready for your part at church tomorrow? Tomorrow? I thought that was next Sunday. That's tomorrow. You guys still have plenty of time to pull something together. What are you supposed to talk about? We have to talk about how to praise God and listen to him. What are we supposed to say? I mean, besides singing praise, we don't know anything about praising. What? What are you talking about? You two just spent the whole morning working on a praise song for your school. Praising our school? Praising your school. I am a bulldog, and I'm your dad. Ooh, ooh, I am a bulldog, ooh, ooh, and I play football. <laughs> well, you know, obviously you need a lesson on what praise is about. I'll clean up here, go grab a pencil and paper, and meet me in the living room. The first thing you need to know about praise is, basically, praise is saying or singing something nice or good about someone or something. You can rap a praise to God, too. Well, yes, I guess you can. The Bible says that some people shout their praise to God and use musical instruments. Don't forget about singing. <laughs> of course, we can use our voices, too. And let's not forget, we can also praise God using our whole body. Yeah, I've seen people bow down, kneel, and even raise their hands. Yeah, that's right. And we need to remember that we don't have to be in a church to praise God. We can be anywhere, alone or in a group. Once, I was singing a praise song while I was on my bike. That's a good one. Okay, I think you've got enough to go on. I've got to go work on the car. You're on your own. I think we've got enough. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Dad. Yeah? I forgot to ask you about the other part of our presentation. What other part? The listening part. How do we hear what God's trying to tell us? Well, God communicates to us in several ways. Now, most likely he won't talk out loud, but his word, the Bible, is one way he communicates. Like when we're afraid and God tells us just to trust him? That's right. As dad continued, he told me about how we can also hear what God is saying to us through our teachers, our pastor, and situations we find ourselves in. And sometimes we hear God through our thoughts. You know, it's just that thought in your mind when you know what the right thing is. The next morning we were ready, and Dad got a preview of our presentation on the way to church. Ready? We praise you, God, with hands on high. You made the earth, you made the sky. We praise in morning, we praise in night. We both know praising you is right. We love you, God. Oh, yeah. We praise you, God. Oh, yeah. We love you, God. Oh, yeah. We love you, God. Oh, yeah. How did Casey and Casey's dad define praise? Do you remember? Well, what did Casey and Casey learn about praising God? What are some ways Casey learned that we can listen to God? You see, because God is the one true God, we are to listen to Him, obey His commands, and then praise Him for who He is. Because He's God. He's God. That's enough. Who are the people that we listen to? Who do we listen to? Our parents, our teachers, um, teachers at church, our pastors, different people in our lives, we listen to them. Why? Why do we listen to them? Well, we know that they know more than we do, maybe. Or we trust that God's speaking through them. Um, we trust them because that's one of the things we learn about our parents is we trust them. They take care of us. They provide for us. So they know what's best for us. So maybe that's the reason. Why should we listen to God? Exactly those same reasons. 
God is the creator of the universe. He's the creator of everything. He's the creator of you. So He knows what's best. He loves us so much that He sent His Son Jesus to down a cross for us. He loves us so much that He created us. So we have to trust that He wants what's best for us. So we just learn to trust Him. How does God speak to us? Some of those same things. Maybe through a parent, through someone at church, maybe through the Bible. Maybe God speaks in our voice. Uh, Maybe He just gives us a, once we know Him so well, we know what He thinks because we've learned to know what He wants for our lives. Will He speak through a burning bush to one of us? Probably not. Maybe, but probably not. Some of the ways God speaks to us include Bible music. How about circumstances? God puts us in circumstances and maybe we work through it. Other people. God spoke to Moses through that burning bush. And God tells Moses what to do. He says, I need you to go. How did Moses respond? With excuses? With reasons not to? But ultimately... He listened to God. He trusts God. And for the rest of his life, he's able to lean on that and always trust God in all kinds of circumstances. I'm encouraging you, K through fifth grade, listen, it's hard sometimes to trust God. But once you trust God the first time and he proves himself to you and you learn, man, God's got what's best for me. Then the next time it's a little easier. And then the next time it's even easier. And throughout your life, you'll learn that you can trust God in every situation. Let me ask you some review questions. Who was Moses' father-in-law? Do you remember the name? Hmm. Who did God allow to help Moses speak? Who was that? Who was Moses supposed to say that sent him? What was on fire but didn't burn? What did God tell Moses to remove and why? What did Moses' staff become when he threw it on the ground? Oh, wait, did I say that? I may have skipped that part, but do you remember from last week? What did Moses have before God called him? Or what did Moses do before God called him? Sorry. Where was Moses when God called him? Near a mount something? And he was doing what? Where did God tell Moses to go? I want you to go and I want you to do this. Do you know where the Bible story is located today? Exodus chapter 3. Where can you learn to listen to God? God has a plan and he wants all people to join him. God chose Moses for a specific task. Moses was an Israelite who lived as a prince and then became a shepherd. Well, what purpose does God have for you? And how has your background prepared you for God's plan? I don't know as kids what that looks like, but God is already preparing you now for His plan. Maybe His plan for you tomorrow. Maybe He's preparing you for His plan next week, next month, next year. Maybe He's preparing you for the great plan He has for you 20 years from now. Whatever it is, God has a plan. Consider this. Although God may not call you to lead a whole nation like Moses, He has called you to be faithful to His service. You see, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And you can trust Him knowing that He is Yahweh, the one true God. Thanks, guys. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for um, the story of Moses. So many lessons throughout his life that You can teach us. But God, today, thank You for being the only God, the one true God, the God that we can trust. God, the one that never fails us, never leaves us, is always there for us. And God, help us. 
uh, every child here, every adult, help us to understand that and to learn to trust you. And God, if we'll just trust you with the little things, we'll then learn to trust you with the bigger things. And before long, we'll trust you with every aspect of our life. And God, I pray that that will happen in our lives as we go. God, thank you again. Lord, I pray for all of our students, or all of our kids who are going back to school and, and whatever that looks like, whether it be at home or whether it be at school or, or a little bit of both or whatever it is, God, I pray for them. I pray that you're going to give them wisdom and you're going to help them grow in knowledge and, and God, that you're just going to bless them this year. It's going to be one of the greatest years of their lives and God, we'll give you praise for that and we thank you for it all. In the name of Jesus, amen.